Purposely Unplugged. It's Lori. It's the February 2024 show. I'm Dave Scott from Hub Media. Today, the word we're going to talk about, and boy, are you sure we want to go down this path, <laughs> is truth. Um, you sent me an excellent piece on it, and I, I, let's get into this because I kind of, I, I mentioned to you, and you said this in your piece, I, perception of reality and the truth sometimes is altered everybody, I think, a little bit. But you kind of dive into this. So let's talk, why is truth so important and what is it relative here in our podcast today? I looked at this topic, Dave. I spent hours looking at Brene Brown, TED Talks, Psychology Today. You know, I really went down a rabbit hole with this one. Um, but the more I looked at things and the more I listened to things, I realized how big of a topic it is. Because there's truth in our marriages, in our relationships, in our friendships, in our work connections, and with our children. I, and you, you're totally right. And I think when I started, when I read your piece, and folks, you'll be able to read this piece too at some point, um, was the word that kept coming back to me, and it's a word that we keep going back to, was communication. Mm -hmm. Because the truth, again, you want to sort of dive into it. But it's how it's communicated, too. And you sort of bring that up in this piece, which I thought was excellent. So, you know, why is the truth so hard for folks? Why are we struggling with it in all walks of life? Mm -hmm. Well, I really reflected, you know, if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, truth is rooted in our perception. One quote that kept coming up is, I stopped explaining myself when I realized people only understand from their level of perfection. And this speaks to people's need to have their truth heard and to be supported in their truth. But in sometimes, Dave, it just can't happen. And in all reality, it's something Simon, X, Simon Sinek has said, that we have a tribe. We have those people around us. We have a tribe. So my tribe needs to believe my truth. Your tribe needs to believe your truth. But it sometimes can come down to perception. It reminds me of, I don't even remember, it was a joke a long time ago where the, I can't even remember the basis of it, but the, the guy said, oh, that cow's blue. He said, oh, no, that cow's green, right? Just different perception of the, you know, what they were seeing. And that's sometimes how it gets altered in, in life's real state, right? What you perceive and what I perceive might be totally different. But what about when, when the truth is right there in front of you? Um, you know, if someone is not being truthful with you, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a different lane? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty complicated as well. I mean, the reality is, if we look at a family situation, if there's five people in that family, each person has a different reflection of what the truth really is. And again, psychology today kind of indicates that we respond to facts but in all reality, your truth is based on what you believe to be fact, what you saw as fact. And we filter that through our personal experiences. So in a family, even, there are five different perceptions of truth, realities of truth, and the way they're looking at truth. And you kind of bring up this piece about not telling the truth. So let's talk about that. You know, there's another article that says, for every good reason to lie, there is a better reason to tell the truth. And again, this is Simon Sinek, where he says, we can tell the truth and not be hurtful. If we think about timing and if we think about how the other person has to receive it. So even at times where we think we need to lie, Dave, we can look at it a different way. And from all different situations, we can understand people's perceptions if we listen. So it, it, with that, with that component, uh, I'm going to try and think of a quick example. So let's say there's something I want to tell my wife that I've read, but it's not the right time. Right. So I'm going to maybe divert that subject to a later date until I feel that it, she can maybe cope with that or understand that better. Is that kind of what we're saying here? Absolutely. So if we look at our work relationships, our friendships, our kids, if we look at all those relationships, we know when that person is at their best. Are they a morning person? Are they a night person? Do they need to have a cup of coffee? Is this a Saturday morning kind of thing? And so when I have someone in therapy, we always talk about that to make sure that a difficult conversation can happen in the best possible way. 
So what happens when you have someone in therapy and you're getting to that truth, but you just said it, let's say somebody else in their family sees the truth differently. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, how do you bridge that gap? Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to that person's sense of reality and perception and truth is part of that. But truth is really this pursuit of knowledge and critical thinking and Socratic thought. You know, I really like Socratic thought. Maybe that'll be another session all in of itself. Um, but really, it's most relevant within the system. So within the system of who you need to talk to, I mean, what do they need to hear? What is your truth? What's important for you to say? And then we build strategies around sharing the truth in the best possible way and when it's safe to do so and how to safely do so. So that, I like this because let's say you're in a session with a person and something comes out. Let's say something that they're, that's been weighing on them for a long time and it's a big heavy moment, but it's been lifted. But they're going back to the scenario where somebody else doesn't believe that truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can be, can't that sort of tug at that person both ways? Like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, of course it can. Uh, but in a therapeutic relationship, that's where we build safety so that that person knows they can explore it here, talk about it here, build the strategies here. And then together, and that person decides when it's time, how it's time. I mean, often we practice these things, we talk them through, we think about, you know, the pendulum of the best and worst case scenario, and we always look at safety. And in all honesty, Dave, if someone can tell me something, honestly, then we have to look at, have you told this to anyone before? Was your truth denied? And if you tell the truth, are you putting yourself at risk? Because we have to always consider safety. I really like when someone can have those conversations, whether with me or another therapist, as long as those conversations can happen, to really build some structure around what does this look like for you? What does this feel like for you? How can you word this? Suggest different wordings that are more eye-based statements, really work those out, and then think about timing and what the other person needs. And sometimes people decide, I'm not going to tell the truth. I'm not going to pursue this because in this situation, I've done what I've needed to do to heal, but that doesn't mean everyone else in my life needs to heal. I got you. So it really goes back to origin, doesn't it? What we talked about last month. That connection is very clear there now. Um, I would, and you sort of answered the next question I had about if I'm cleared with it and I'm moved on. Um, in that situation, when that truth comes out and they're, they're able to, like you said, move on from it, not worrying about what the rest of the people think, it's got to be such a big accomplishment in someone's life if it's something that's weighed on them. Talk a bit, just a little bit about how freeing that can be for a client. Well, some clients say it feels like a weight's lifted off their shoulder. Some clients say, you know, their body feels so much better. It's very different for everyone, but that's certainly a wonderful moment to sit with someone and just have that life experience shift and change for them. It's all about what they're, I mean, obviously it opens doors for other accomplishments for them then. Right. Like, I mean, it's probably something that was pulling them back a little bit more than they realized. But then coming to that uh, point where they're dealing with it and understanding it and seeing the truth for what it is, it clears a path for them. It opens doors, doesn't it? Well, it helps them cope in a different way. Yeah, exactly. Because now they understand what they're dealing with. Um, it, do you, is like a lot of the clients that you deal with, is it? Is the truth really what holds them back? Like when you, I mean, you deal with such a different array of clients. I'm just curious now if, if there's always a truth that's buried underneath there that you're trying to find or they're trying to find. Is that what it, in a lot of cases, does it boil down to that? Is it that simple? Well, nothing is ever simple. So let's start there. Sometimes it is a case where there's something underneath. So in that case, I would offer, you know, is there something else? Is there more? And if there's not, then there's not. And that's okay. Like we don't ever try to do that. And sometimes people will say, huh, I've never talked about this with anyone. 
And actually that came up last time we talked, right? Yeah. So this is a common thread. You know, I cannot talk to anyone else about this. I have not talked to anyone about this. And that's where I get to say, I'm so glad we have this safe space where we can do what you want to do. If someone hasn't come to you or hasn't, hasn't dealt with a therapist, but they have these, uh, they're trying to deal with truths in their life. Mm -hmm. Is there any, you know, I don't want to say advice, but is there anything you'd recommend? Like, would, is it just as simple as going for a walk, clearing your head? Is it trying to, you know, do those little things? Like, I find myself, and we've always talked about this, running, it just helps me sort of the process, right? It gets the process started to what I want to get to. But is that, in a lot of cases, do a lot of people do, is that, is that a healthy way for people to deal with things if they can't get to a therapist? True. So you're really talking about mindfulness. That's a whole yeah. other topic too. My goodness. We've got planned out till June now. <laughs> <laughs> um, some people, absolutely. I mean, everyone should have a self-care plan, whatever yeah. that looks like. For you, it's running. I mean, whatever this looks like for people. Lots of people, it's their pets. And I know you have dogs too, so you get that as well. We all need a self-care plan that's foundational and then if someone wants to have a conversation with a therapist just reach out lots of us do a 20 minute consult for free on the phone and you need to know if that person is the right person to kind of connect with or not so i would suggest that anybody reach out to one of us that does one of those free consults and just see what where it lands and how it feels uh truth be told <laughs> this has been a great show <laughs> how do people get a hold of you if they, want to, if they want to have a chat with Lori, how do they get a hold of you? Phone is always best. So 226-934-7425. You can try email as well. Lori at purposefullyunplugged.com. I think the big thing I took away from this is what we talked about earlier in this conversation about truth being perception. But I think the other part of it is, again, the origin and the communication. Mm -hmm. So... If I'm not explaining to you what my truths are or how I feel or what I'm experiencing, you don't know. So it's that breakdown of understanding, you know, oh, I don't feel good today and that's it. Well, what's behind that, right? Yeah. Well, and this is the February edition, so we're coming up to Valentine's Day, and this is a very vulnerable moment for anybody in a relationship, so maybe this is a time to just broach a little bit of truth. You know, I really don't want flowers. I really don't want chocolate. Let's just sit on the couch and watch a movie or something like that. I mean, that's a great place of truth to start um, because so many struggle in relationships over Valentine's Day because it is a commercialized expectation. Right. But the other part of that is, too, you don't want to. Uh... Oh, Valentine's Day is a great. <laughs> I like that. This is we never even thought about this. But I mean, the other part of that is you don't want to say, I don't want to sit on the couch with you. I want to go do this right like i mean there's again it, the truth is good but you've got to massage it you can't just blurt these things out too either correct well and a different way to say that is absolutely when we're done sitting on the couch there could go. we go for a hike as well you got to re recalibrate uh for sure and i'm lucky enough that my wife reads me like a book so the communication is always good and she, she she knows she's not getting candy <laughs> <laughs> She's lucky enough. She's got me. Good <laughs> working a woman while. Okay, that's oh. a good place to land. <laughs> and now we're gonna. <laughs> and now the session really gets going. <laughs> uh, just a little narcissist on my part. Sorry. Um, take care. Can't wait for the next show. But I mean, the truth. I mean, I think there's so many layers to this. And folks, yeah. talk to Lori if you're struggling with this. She'll help you out. And thanks for doing this today, Lori. I really appreciate it. It, it was good. 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 good good podcast like always wonderful take care <laughs>